Blessed are all who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. By the labor of your hands you shall eat. Blessed are you, and blessed will you be. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, as we gather together today in this Easter season, we celebrate on this first day of May the celebration of the Feast of St. Joseph the Worker. And as we prepare now to enter into our worship together, let us begin as we acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of her Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, creator of all things, who laid down for the human race the law of work, Graciously grant that by the example of St. Joseph and under his patronage, we may complete the work you set us out to do and attain the rewards you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Saul, still breathing murderous threats against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, that if he should find any men or women who belonged to the way, he might bring them back to Jerusalem in chains. On his journey, as he was nearing Damascus, a light from the sky suddenly flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, Who are you, sir? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, for they heard the voice, but could see no one. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. For three days he was unable to see, and he neither ate nor drank. There was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias, and the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. He answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and ask for the house of Judas, for a man from Tarsus, named Saul. He is there praying, and in a vision he had seen a man named Ananias come in and lay hands on him, that he may regain his sight. But Ananias replied, Lord, I have heard from many sources about this man, what evil things he has done to your holy ones in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to imprison all who call upon your name. But the Lord said to him, 
Go, for this man is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before Gentiles, kings, and children of Israel. And I will show him what he will have to suffer for my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. Laying his hands on him, he said, Saul, my brother, the Lord has sent me. Jesus, who appeared to you on the way by which you came, that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, things like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. He got up and was baptized, and when he had eaten, he recovered his strength. He stayed some days with the disciples in Damascus, and he began at once to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For steadfast is the kindness towards us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Alleluia, alleluia. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has life eternal, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still die, whoever eats this bread will live forever. These things he said while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, today on this first day of May, we celebrate in the midst of our Easter season the feast of the Saint Joseph the Worker. And this commemoration of Saint Joseph the Worker is a wonderful way not only to start this month of May, but it is also a reminder to all of us of how important the sanctity of work is and how we have been given by the gift of God, first through our life and then through each of our individual and particular talents, the ability to accomplish many things by the work of our hands. And this 
beautiful celebration of St. Joseph the Worker uh, has in historical purposes many times been from a religious point of view in the eyes of the church placed up and against, especially in the times of communism and socialism, uh, a counteraction to an understanding of work that is taken and extracted from a religious or spiritual context. And this Feast of St. Joseph the Worker today that we celebrate in the church reminds us that we can't separate the understanding of the dignity of human work and the purpose of human work from our understanding of faith and salvation itself. And as we're in the midst, especially of this Easter season, where we commemorate what the work of Jesus Christ has accomplished for us, that work of salvation, we remind ourselves whether it is in the liturgy itself, which means the work of the people, or whether it is in the individual work that we undertake by the means of our own profession, or even in the necessary tasks of everyday life, that what we are able to accomplish by the work of our hands is only able to be done by the blessings of God, by the outpouring of His grace, and by His sustaining us in what we do. And I think more so than ever, as we're in this time of uh, the pandemic and the social distancing, isolation, quote-unquote, working from home, or maybe even separated from work, as we see the highest unemployment figures right now that we've probably ever seen since the Great Depression, people all of a sudden have a new understanding of the importance of work, not just, not just, of course, for the important need of sustaining the economy and one's own personal livelihood and responsibilities through that economic situation. And certainly our hearts and minds and prayers go out to those who are suffering at this time if they are unemployed. But we also, very interestingly, are starting to see a lot of studies, even in this short period of time, that are talking about the social, or excuse me, the psychological effects of having a non-social activity, including that in the workplace. And even though people are very efficiently able to accomplish many tasks by remote means or through technology, uh, psychologists are already starting to say there is something that is affecting people because there is not socialization even tied to work. And when we think about all of this, it really puts into context what we're celebrating today with this Feast of St. Joseph the Worker. It reminds us that work is not just simply seen or should be seen as the passing of time and the toil of our hands or our minds or the expenditure of our energy simply for some material good or just to consume time, but it is filled with a purpose and an end. And as people of faith living in our Judeo-Christian tradition, we understand that the work that we do not only fulfills the necessary needs we have on the natural human level of providing for our families and sustaining us physically, but we believe and profess that our work also helps us because we see our work as a response to a vocation and we see our work as intimately tied to our own salvation. And today, as we hear our first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, we hear that famous and very familiar story of the conversion of Saul, or the conversion of St. Paul. And in that great story where he's knocked off his horse, where the, the light is in his eye and he's blinded, and finally Ananias has to come, and the scales come off his eyes, and he's able to see, and this huge conversion, and he goes from being the strongest persecutor of the Christians to now one of the preeminent apostles and of course the apostle to the Gentiles, we see, don't we, how work can be bad or how work can be good. And the work that Saul was doing before his conversion was basically rounding up, persecuting, and even allowing Christians to be killed, trying to destroy the faith. But after the intervention of Christ in this conversion experience, we see how St. Paul's whole life and now his work is completely reoriented. And it's a beautiful reading to have today on this Feast of St. Joseph the Worker because it reminds all of us that that's the difference our work can make. Are we working for or are we working against God? And our society today poses many challenges to us. Work in and of itself is and can be sometimes very 
objective or simply uh, neutral. But what are we really working for? Are we working for the conversion of souls? Are we working for the spread of the gospel? Are we working for building a just and equitable society? Are we working to bring Christ's love, his message of mercy, and his message of peace into the world? Or are we simply marching through this short allotted time that God has given us, filling ourselves with a lot of busyness, but what are we accomplishing? Are we working for or are we working against God? St. Paul gives us that beautiful example, having known both. In our gospel today, we continue the Bread of Life discourse, and indeed, as the beginning of this passage tells us, the Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? And Jesus goes on, amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have life within you. This reminds us, too, that just as we work, St. James says we must also eat, let those who do not work do not eat, but we work and we eat. But we are reminded that what sustains us is not just the food of the world, but what sustains us completely is the food of God, the Eucharist itself. And certainly, again, as we've been saying through these times of the pandemic, our separation from the Eucharist, I am sure has caused, very much like St. Paul, uh, that longing to eat again. And it's interesting in that first reading, it says that after he was baptized, he came back and he ate and he regained his strength. And what did he do once he regained his strength? He went out and proclaimed the gospel. And in that same way, uh, the work that we do must be nourished by the word of God and by the Eucharist so that we may be strengthened, we may go out, and we may do the work that God has called us to do. Let us pray today in a very special way that through the intercession of St. Joseph, the worker, who toiled to provide for the needs of the Holy Family, and who gives us a beautiful example of the dignity of human work, that we may find a society and build a society that is just. And also, especially during these difficult times, that all of those who are struggling, either with working in the manner that they have to, or those who are struggling because they cannot work, that the Lord may intervene, and soon that all may be working, not just for sustenance, but with good and full employment to sustain their families and their needs, but also working for the building up of the kingdom of God, working for God, not against him. My dear brothers and sisters, in this month of May, we also ask our Blessed Mother to intercede for us as we present now our petitions to the Lord. Let us pray that all of us may be nourished and transformed by Christ in the Eucharist, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the word of God may put an end to violence in the name of religion between nations and peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That persecuted Christians throughout the world may be protected by God within their homes and churches. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the newly initiated may be led by Jesus into deeper communion with him in this Easter season. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our personal intentions, for those needs listed in our parish book of prayer, and for all those we hold in the silence of our hearts and bring before the Lord today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those who are suffering, for the hospitalized, the homebound, and the dying, and particularly those affected in any way by this outbreak and virus. May the Lord continue to strengthen them, give them health and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who continue to support us during these times, they may be filled with courage, strength, and the grace that comes from God, working to glorify Him and to give hope to all who are in despair and need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Hear our prayer. For Anna Jara and for all of the souls of the faithful departed, that they who have died may find eternal rest and peace in God's heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Father of mercy and love, hear the prayers that we ask today and answer them according to your will through Christ, our risen Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Through the divine work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, font of all mercy, look upon our offerings which we bring before your majesty in commemoration of St. Joseph, and mercifully grant that the gifts we offer may become the means of protection for those who call upon you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and on the commemoration of St. Joseph, to give you fitting praise, to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given to you as spouse to the Virgin Mother of God, and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household, to watch like a father over your only begotten Son, who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtue of heaven and the blessed seraphim Worship together with exaltation. May our voices join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice 
And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. James, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord, giving thanks to God through him. Alleluia. Let us pray. Having fed upon heavenly delights, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that by St. Joseph's example, cherishing in our hearts the sign of your love, we may ever enjoy the fruit of perpetual peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us conclude this Friday with our traditional prayers for peace, those in the military, for vocations, and for an end to this pandemic. begin with our prayer for peace. Praise to you, all loving God, for you speak tender words of peace to all your children. Guide our efforts to bring forth peace, the fruit of justice and love. Remove from us the greed and hate that threaten peace within our country and throughout the world. Inspire the leaders of governments to promote policies and actions that ensure peace and well-being for the human family. Strengthen those who work for peace in every place and keep safe under your watchful care all who serve and protect us. Bring lasting peace into our world by sending your eternal spirit into the hearts that you have made. Preserve all people from harm now and up to that day when the fullness of your peace will be revealed. Grant us this gift through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, whose kingdom of justice, love, and peace endures forever and ever. Amen. Our prayer for those serving in the military. Praise to your watchful God, for you are our refuge and strength in every time and place. Send your blessing upon those who are serving our country in the armed forces. By your powerful spirit, shield them from all harm, uphold them in good times and bad, especially when danger threatens. Let your peace be the sentry that stands guard over their lives so that they may return home safely. Look with compassion on all victims of war, ease their sufferings and heal their pains. Put an end to wars over all the earth and hasten the day when the human family will rejoice in lasting peace. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns as the Prince of Peace, both now and and forever. Amen. Our prayer for religious vocations. Heavenly Father, your loving providence accompanies us on our life's journey. Thank you for the many gifts you have given us. We ask that you continue to call sons and daughters from our families and parishes to serve as priests, deacons, and consecrated men and women in the Diocese of Greensburg. Send your spirit upon us so that many will respond with great love to your call to service and leadership in your church. Give to those you have chosen the faith of the apostle, the vision of the prophet, and the courage of the martyr. Through the intercession of our diocesan patroness, Our Lady of the Assumption, help us to be faithful disciples of your Son by following the example of Mary. Make us generous in sharing ourselves and our talents for the sake of your kingdom on earth. We ask this through Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. In our prayer for this time of distress. Almighty and eternal God, you are the source of all life, all health, and all peace. We turn to you during these difficult times and ask you to send forth through the power of the grace of the Holy Spirit your comfort into the hearts of all who are suffering at this time. We pray for the sick and the dying. Give them peace and strength. We pray for all who serve us and help them in any way. We pray for those supporting our communities in their work, in their talent, and in their volunteering. O oh God, you have given us Christ, the divine physician, to heal us physically and spiritually. We ask that through your grace, you may preserve us from this hour, that you may bring an end to this pandemic, and that we may once again be united with you and all of our brothers and sisters, so that we may together build up your kingdom a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, 
This afternoon on May 1st, uh, we are having throughout the parish many people praying the rosary as we begin this month of May, which is a very special month dedicated to our Blessed Mother. And so we invite you, especially if you're watching uh, via our multimedia platform, this Mass before 1 p.m. today, but certainly even after, you're welcome to do it. I encourage everyone, especially during this month of May, to pray the rosary with great fervency and uh, purpose. But today at one o'clock, we are going to have uh, many members of our parish praying the rosary together in a common bond. So if you are watching this and able to join in praying that rosary at one or at any time throughout the day, especially during these days of May, I encourage you to do that. Also, we continue to keep in our prayers the soul of our parishioner, Frank Nemchik. We pray that God may grant him eternal rest and peace and our prayers continue to go out to Betty and to his entire family. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.